So in this clip, we're going to consider demand in an open economy. So we'll call that the derivation of the DD curve in an open economy. And uh, to start out with, let's state what the goal is. Oh. So what we want to derive is a curve that describes a goods market equilibrium in an open economy in E y space so that we have the exchange rate on this axis and output on this axis uh, what you're going to see is that uh, the curve that we're going to derive looks like this it's upward sloping uh, the dd curve describes goods market equilibrium in an open economy in the ey space and is upward sloping in this space so that output increases in the exchange rate and uh, the question we want to ask is why does it look like that? So uh, let's get started right away and I'll clear this page and uh, start out with uh, a couple of equations. Really simple. Uh, the first is that demand is simply the sum of expenditures, so that's consumption plus government expenditures plus private investment plus exports minus imports, so that's what we'll call the current account. Now, so demand is equal to expenditures and we know of course that expenditures are equal to income, so in equilibrium in fact demand is equal to output. So we will use that equilibrium condition to derive the graph in the next step but let's look first at these components here in just a little more detail consumption is a function of disposable income so that's income less taxes here uh, simply if our income increases we consume more we will for now assume that uh, government expenditures are constant uh, here is a g bar and the same for investment, I bar. So these two are constant. I'm just gonna take that as given now. And then the current account, that's the other crucial piece in the equation here. The current account is a function of uh, disposable income and the real exchange rate, E star P divided by, uh, sorry, let me redo that. That is the real exchange rate E P star over P. So what does this mean here? Um, simply, uh, the simplest explanation here is that C A, the current account, is the difference between exports and imports, often denoted E minus M. E exports is a positive function of the exchange rate. So if the real exchange rate rises, that implies that uh, the products of the home country, of our country, become more affordable abroad so that E rises as the real exchange rate rises. And similarly, similarly, uh, as disposable income rises, our imp imports rise so simply as we have more income at hand for purchases um, in the aggregate the uh, imports rise which means that CA overall is a negative function negative function of imports and a positive function of the exchange rate of the real exchange rate EP star over P so with that in mind, uh, let's go again to a new page and draw the first graph here. This graph is essentially from uh, a principles course, principles of macroeconomics. You have on this axis uh, demand and on the horizontal axis, she, why not try to draw this just somewhat straight, marginally better. 
we have income on this axis and uh, we know that in equilibrium uh, demand demand and output are equal so uh, we can draw a straight line up here with a 45 degree angle with a slope of 1 so that uh, at any point here uh, D is equal to Y so this describes all the points where the goods market is in equilibrium and we can add to that then the aggregate demand curve which is this now this the left hand side aggregate demand is increasing in disposable income so that uh, we can go back here and draw this as an upward sloping function right here so this is what we call the aggregate demand as a positive function of disposable income and through the current account a positive function of the exchange rate okay so what does this mean let's look at these pieces in a, uh, in a bit more detail first here we have what is called usually autonomous expenditures in our case here this would be i plus g this is the portion of expenditures the portion of demand that does not depend on income that is of course only a simplification we could you know make these as well endogenous but uh, as a first approximation this is not uh, all too bad and then of course we need to recognize uh, the intersection here what does this intersection imply well this is the equilibrium so here we have uh, d equal to y and the goods market is in equilibrium we make it a little bit more space here the question that arises is obviously what happens if we are not in equilibrium let's suppose that we are here so that we are so this is y star equilibrium output suppose that we're at y1 well what does that mean the red point here on the demand curve is above output which means that there's excess demand so that uh, output will increase and we're moving upwards towards this equilibrium the same argument applies to the right of this here demand is less than output so we have excess supply and output will be reduced to return back to this equilibrium. So in this simple graph we can show how the goods market adjusts to an equilibrium. Let's go to the next page. Again a graph the second. How do we make use of this? Well let's just redraw it quickly and I'll begin here with the Y 45 degree line and an aggregate demand curve which I'm going to call D1 now let's say uh, um, for uh, the sake of this argument that this aggregate demand curve corresponds to the normal exchange rate E1 let's now further assume that uh, the exchange rate depreciates so E rises recall that E is the dollar price of a unit of foreign currency let's call it euros so if this ratio rises foreign currency becomes more expensive the value of the dollar falls and we have a currency depreciation uh, so that our products in turn become cheaper abroad what did we just say about that well we said that CA is a function of uh, disposable income and the real exchange rate uh, I did it again put the star in the wrong variable so EP star over P 
the star here denoting the foreign foreign country's price index so if e rises right here uh, our net exports will rise which means that uh, aggregate demand will rise what does it imply in the diagram well implies this upward shift you can label this d2 e2 and we're moving from one the first equilibrium to a second equilibrium y2 so e2 is larger than e1 let's note that here as well now recall our goal that we want to derive uh, a relationship between e and y in an open economy this is what we've just done here here are two different e's and here are two different y's we can take this y directly down here then this is y1 and this is y2 and we can denote that this is e1 before the change and e2 after the change e2 is larger than e1 so that we can connect the dots most literally and have this upward sloping relationship in ey space this is the dd curve and that is essentially all that there is to it so output is increasing in the exchange rate due to the link through the current account let's go to a new page and just add a couple pieces of information here um, one more graph to distinguish this from the example with fiscal policy so let's take again D and Y the 45 degree line and now say that this is D1 dependent on G1 and that's the wrong one and then we get a D2 dependent on G2 this translates in EY how? well here we have Y1 here we have Y2 how about the G's though? well the key here and this is why it should be emphasized at this point the exchange rate has not changed so there's an E0 here and we can draw the dotted line right over but demand clearly has increased so this is an exogenous shift of the DD curve DD1 to DD2 so that should be distinguished a shift of an exogenous variable like G should be distinguished from and I'm going to flip back to the previous page should be distinguished from the, ex the endogenous change of the variable that is on uh, our axis here so in summary um, output is increasing in the exchange rate due to the link through the current account